hi everybody. So uh, my name is uh, um, Radek Gruchowski. Um, I work uh, for Verdata. Um, I do um, a little bit of uh, distributed computing. Um, I uh, write in a lot of different programming languages, um, and I, I like to um, do tools. Um, just a little disclaimer, it's my first time, so there could be some hiccups, but just bear with me. I'll try to get back on track as quickly as possible. Um, so this talk will be about gossip. Um, gossip is a machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communication protocol. Um, it is called um, an epidemic protocol. Um, what it means is that the information within the system is being uh, spread um, between machines um, in a unified manner, which means that um, the, the data that um, every machine holds is exactly the same. Um, and uh, yeah, um, the data that every machine holds is um, the same. Um, and the purpose of that is um, to have an overall view of the, of the complete system on every single node. Um, the other way um, of, of um, the other term uh, sometimes used to describe the system is, is biased protocol. Um, in a biased protocol, um, the data, um, the, 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 the data, the, uh, the way the data is being shared between the machines, um, there is a little algorithm involved which uh, basically chooses which members um, the data is shared with. Um, uh, computer science distinguishes three major uh, types of uh, gossip protocols. There is a dissemination protocol, um, which uh, basically spreads the data across the nodes. Um, those are events or background data. Um, there are anti-entropy protocols, which are used for um, repairing replicated data. Um, some databases use it um, for finding the failures within the data sets um, and, uh, and fixing them. And the third uh, type of protocol is um, an aggregate protocol. Those ones uh, calculate some, uh, take some snapshots of the data on the nodes and then calculate the overall um, um, the overall view of the system. Um, how does the gossip work? Um, why is it important to have, um, why is it important to know what gossip is? There is a lot of products out there on the market um, and in open source that actually use this technology. Um, people don't necessarily know that this technology is there. They just assume that those things work. Um, uh, but yeah, things like React, things like Cassandra, um, things like Console, um, they all use gossip under the hood. Um, and uh, yeah, people just uh, don't necessarily realize about, about that. In a gossip system, uh, we have seeds and members. So um, those are machines or computers um, trying to talk to each other. Um, and um, there is no structural difference between those two. The only difference is the role. So we have some machines, and some of them um, will be like a first point of contact uh, for other machines to come into the system and start to talk together. So those are the seeds. And the, everybody else within that so-called overlay will be a member. Um, the way we elect the seed is we choose a member that we know will be there for a bit longer, um, will be available there for a bit longer. So, for example, if we was to use a DNS um, to pick a number of those seeds, um, we need to make sure that they are available for at least the time to live for the DNS um, to be available. Or we can use configuration management systems, for example, Chef Puppet, um, to store some metadata and allow the, the members to, to look it up. Um, usually, um, we use UDP for, um, for gossip protocols. Um, 
I mentioned that um, that is in the dissemination protocol, uh, which is the most easy to find um, for a gossip system. Um, we pass events or the background data. The, the order of those events is not really that important, and losing some of those events because of the nature of how gossip works, and we will go through that in a moment. Um, basically, we, we can afford losing some data. It's not really uh, that important to receive every single event. Um, the latency uh, needs to be acceptable for somebody who's trying to uh, build a system based on gossip. Um, the, the, the data not necessarily will be real time. Um, the core um, gossip communication pattern is um, there are usually three steps involved, but um, we can get away with two. Um, there is a digest, and um, okay, so there is a digest. Um, there is a digest act. Every member um, in the dissemination protocol um, stores um, a membership list of everybody who is available on that overlay. And that is the, the data that is, that is being disseminated within, the, within that system. Um, the, the messages, the digest and the digest act are being sent in so-called gossip rounds. Um, and this will be explained shortly as well. So here we have uh, the basic pattern. We have um, two members, they want to talk together. So the digest is basically like, hello. Um, then the member B, upon receiving hello, will send the digest act, which is, yeah, I've seen you. And optionally, the system may choose to send the digest act act, but it doesn't have to. Those names come from uh, implementation of Cassandra. They're not necessarily the names that you would see um, in a gossip implementation somewhere. And a uh, quick rundown. I hope that everybody can see the, the seed at the bottom. Um, so when we want to build a gossip overlay, um, the first thing we do is we elect a seed. In this case, we have a seed somewhere available under this address. Um, and then we want to join a member into that overlay. So the member will come in, and he knows um, because he, for example, looked it up um, with the DNS that the address of the seed is that, he will connect to him, send the digest, um, and receive the digest um, ACK. Now, both of those members, the seed and the member A, will know that there is two of them available. Um, they will exchange the information about themselves, um, and they will store the membership list of each other um, on, on those nodes, on those two nodes. Now, if we want to join a member B, the member B will come in, he will go to the seed. He's not aware of the member A at this stage. Um, and um, he will receive a digest ag from the seed. Um, and this digest ag will contain three entries for member B because the seed already knows about member A and himself, and he knows about member B. Upon the next round, gossip round, which we will explain in a short moment, um, the member A will also send another digest to the uh, seed, and in response, he will receive uh, the list of three members, which is member A, the seed, and member B. So at this stage, all of them can communicate together because they know each other's addresses. Um, and uh, yeah, they can just directly talk to each other. Um, and what if something goes wrong? Because that was a question actually somebody asked me yesterday. Um, what if you have a net split or um, what if just something goes wrong? Um, the nature of the gossip system is such that if something disappears, um, it's not really such a problem um, because the membership list that the members hold, um, they are already aware of who the other members in that overlay are. 
So if one of the members goes away, it doesn't impact the system um, as such. No new members can join when the seed goes away because it's the first point of contact. Um, but the, others, the other guys can, can still talk to each other. So the membership, what, um, what it basically is, is just a list of, of names, addresses, or paths to get to those members, um, to other members in that overlay. Um, gossip around, which I mentioned, um, is basically an interval at which those messages are sent by the members. Um, so this is something that uh, an implementation of the system that um, uses gossip uh, will um, just choose at random or defined by business requirement. Um, but say it's every two seconds. So every two seconds, a member um, will send a digest to one of the available seeds. Um, it will just pick one seed and send it. Um, and then it will send another digest, the same digest with a different ID, to uh, one other reachable member of that overlay. And if he receives the response, he receives the digest uh, from those members, he will update the membership list that he holds with a timestamp, which um, basically means this guy is still available in that overlay. If there is no response for a certain amount of time, um, the member will go into a state um, which is called un uh, quarantined. Um, in this state, if there is any information um, coming in regarding the member who just left, um, who just was put as a quarantined, um, that the information will be discarded. This is to avoid um, false positives hearing about members that the member just considered they are quarantined. If there is no further communication for why amount of time, um, the member will be put as unreachable. And that means that that member is most likely gone from the overlay. So what the system can do in such case is take an action to um, for example, make a decision for replacing that, that member um, by doing some, some software action. Um, there is a fourth state, which um, I will get to. Um, it, it's important to, to, to just remember about it. Um, some implementations don't do it, uh, but there is um, a fourth state with, which would be basically dropped. Um, so if there is no further communication, when the member went unreachable, um, the system may decide that he will drop that member completely from the membership list, and he will not expect um, further communication from that, um, from that member. Um, if we was to choose um, a database like Cassandra or React, um, what usually you would have is, say, you have a cluster of six nodes, um, and they are um, available uh, with some names. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, when the third member goes away, the system will still expect that the third member will come back, so he will not drop it. Um, at some point, um, a manual action will be taken. The, the member comes back. Um, he comes back with, with ID3, which probably reflects the data that was sitting on that node. Um, but if he was to use gossip for a different purpose, um, for example, for um, reactive system configuration on, in the cloud, um, and if he was doing that, say, in the public cloud, um, your members will come back always with different IP addresses, um, which means that whatever has been become unreachable, if it became dropped, will never come back. So you just don't want it. You don't want to keep that in memory. Um, and I will uh, come back to that example a bit later. Um, 
when it comes to security in a gossip system, so we say that the members contact the seed um, over UDP, they send some data, um, they get some data back, it is important to provide some security, but there is no formal specification for that. Gossip as such is not a formal specification protocol. It's just a pattern of communication. Um, so implementation has to be um, done uh, by yourself when, when you build such system. Um, for example, um, yeah, um, we'll get back to, to that as well, I'm sorry. Um, so the real, real world products I mentioned, um, so we have Apache Cassandra, we have Basho React, um, we have a product called um, Netflix Dynamite. Um, I assume that everybody knows what those two first ones are. Um, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of what the third one is. Um, so the Netflix Dynamite um, is a gossip system that you can use um, to um, make any relational database, um, turn it into a distributed database. So you take a MySQL server, um, you take another MySQL server, you set up Dynamite on those two nodes or more, and the transaction log from one of those nodes will be gossiped to other servers, and it will be basically turned into something like a distributed database where you can do partitioning and stuff like that. Um, so that's the principle of gossip. And if there are any questions, just ask, okay? Um, or if something is not really clear. Um, so I'm gonna talk about something that I've been working on, um, but I give you just a little bit of background where it came from. Um, so I said I work for Verdata. Um, Verdata is uh, a big data ingestion platform and analytics platform. Um, and we have a quite a unique um, requirement, or maybe not, such, not, not so unique. Um, we run in different cloud environments. We run on EC2, we run on software, we run on OpenStack. Uh, we are doing some experiments with Docker. Um, we run the platform either in the VPC or we run it in a public cloud. When we run it in a public cloud, we need to be able to tell the platform um, what is allowed to talk to different components. So our platform is a number of different components, right? We have some broker that receives the data from some devices. Um, we have Kafka, we have Cassandra, um, we have SAMSA, Spark, a lot of different things. Um, we try to be cloud agnostic as much as we can. So we can take the same code that we deploy on Amazon to software and just run it without too many modifications there, without trying to support too many platforms. Um, the, the need for the need for gossip came because of that requirement for configuring the platform. So what we do is every machine running within a setup, and the setup is about 70 boxes with the simulation boxes, um, runs a gossip daemon. And they talk together over gossip protocol. Um, the information that they share is um, the chef information. We use chef for uh, bootstrapping um, our nodes. And every machine um, exchanges over the overlay its role. So he, he says, I'm a Cassandra and I'm number zero. I'm Kafka and I'm number one. I'm Zookeeper and I'm number two. When we launch the platform, we want to launch it as quickly as we can. And uh, we don't necessarily want to launch the components in a, in a specific order. So, for example, Kafka requires Zookeeper to run. Um, but we don't want to launch Zookeeper and wait for Zookeeper until we launch Kafka. So we launch them all at once, and we let Gossip 
trigger actions on the nodes when the members come in. So we don't want to be we don't want to be proactive. We want to react to what's happening within our setup. So every node will basically fire off a, a message. You know, the, the the node comes up. It knows its role because it has a first type of boot JSON file, um, which contains what it is. Um, and the other nodes will receive it. They will get uh, a member in event, um, and they will introspect what data was on it. Um, and they will figure out, okay, this is, um, I'm zookeeper, and I see another zookeeper came in. Um, I'm gonna trigger some action and make sure that both, both of those zookeepers can talk together. Um, it will also configure firewalls. Um, this is our own implementation of security groups. Security groups are only available on, on Amazon um, and OpenStack, but for example, on software, they're not available. And we may want to launch the platform in different environments as well. So we will basically figure out, okay, Zookeeper 1 has this address, Zookeeper um, 2 has this address. We just make them talk together and open only the necessary ports for those two nodes because we know their IP addresses. Um, so that's basically where the need for uh, gossip came into the platform um, at their data. The problem with uh, the first implementation um, was that um, it was written, it, it is written in Ruby, it's still in production there. Um, it, uh, it is a, it's, it's, it's a library, so it, you cannot use it from any other software. Um, and I started working on something um, different, uh, which is um, called Gossiper. Uh, this is my little uh, project that I've been doing for about a year now. Um, and uh, I actually learned Erlang with, uh, with this. So it's a gossip daemon. It's not a library. It, it runs on the box. Um, the purpose is to have a number of apps talking to the daemon and have it as a common uh, platform. It's content independent. There is a number of digests there that make the basic patterns work. Um, and it's all based um, on Apache Thrift as a serialization mechanism. So the reasoning, um, yeah, I explained that. Um, the previous one was a library. Um, this one is a daemon. That's a, that's a major difference here. The features that I managed to implement so far in this. It's, it's language agnostic because it uses Thrift as a serialization for, for the messages. Um, multiple overlays. So I mentioned that when the members come in, they, when they talk together, they establish this so-called overlay, which is basically the, all the nodes talking together. Um, but what if you have an application that say sits only on Kafka or on only on Zookeeper to monitor a specific aspect of that platform, um, would you like to have all the nodes, 70 nodes within that setup talking on that overlay? Uh, not necessarily. So the application that wants to build an overlay will tell the gossip or daemon, hey, I want to have an overlay. And here is the port. Here is the um, security details that I want to use for that. Um, and yeah, just start me one of those. And then another node, another Zookeeper node will do the same. So the application will start. It will pass the same details. And those two nodes will, will establish an overlay over the Gossiper infrastructure. Um, and some other applications may, may do exactly the same thing over the same Gossiper infrastructure. Um, so on one daemon, you can run multiple overlays. Um, the double security layer, um, as I said, the security has to be implemented um, on your own. Um, here, at the moment, the, the only um, security, security available for the, for the overlay um, is the AES-256 encryption. So all the data that is being sent on the overlay is actually encrypted. Um, but I mentioned that there are the members that connect to the um, daemon. So if I have two applications on the same host, 
that would like to talk on the same overlay, I would like to make sure that I cannot spoof application B from application A. So the, every application will choose another secret. Um, when it will connect to the overlay, it will pass that secret, and then the data will be not interpreted if somebody else claims that he's that member. It's all managed via the REST API. It supports multicast overlays. It has IPv6 support. There is a very simple pub-sub mechanism built in. Um, it's not for high volumes of data, really. Um, and I'll show a very, very little um, demo of that. Um, and the multi-data center support is coming. Um, the reason why this is um, a separate feature is because when you have multiple data centers, um, the latency between the machines sitting within those different data centers will be higher. So what you want to avoid is that the members from, say you have two, one in Singapore and another one somewhere in Europe, you don't want the members from Singapore talking directly to the seeds in Europe because the latency is higher. Um, so what you want to do is you want to elect the seeds in Singapore and elect the seeds in Europe and have the members from those regions talking only to the seeds in that region. And then have a mechanism that dispatches the data between the data centers only um, by the seeds. So for that, I'm working on Raft um, support to add Raft to Gossiperl um, so people um, can build the multi-data center support with that. So I've got this, this little demo here, which is the PubSub demo. Um, I tried it a number of times, so I hope it will work. Um, so what we have here is those are three vagrant boxes um, running on this computer here. Um, and IP address is visible in there. Um, and we will start the daemon. So we'll start Gossipel. And then we can see at the bottom that it came up. We will start another one. And it came up. Uh, let's start the third one. Um, Start. So the third one came up as well. So what happens now is there is no overlays yet. So there's only the daemon running on every of those boxes. And uh, we will turn, we will create an overlay. Um, so I have a, a, a few shortcuts here. Um, or a few snippets that I use for building them. Um, so let's try. So as I said, it's all managed via the REST API. So we have a curl command here. Um, and what this is going to do is going to create an overlay. Um, it's going to create an overlay called gossip, uh, gossip or overlay remote. Um, on port 6666 um, with some rack details. Um, and in this case, we have only one seed sitting within the rack. The racks is what would be managed by um, Raft, which is not implemented yet completely. Um, we have one seed, um, yeah, 5100, which is the first box sitting here, the first one on the left. Um, so let's try to bring up an overlay. So there it is. Um, it's running on that node. Um, let's spin up another one on the second node. And we have a member added as new. Um, 
So this guy figured out that you know, 100 is available. Uh, and we receive the member in event. And then when we do exactly the same thing for um, the third one, we see that there is another member joining. So we have an overlay of three, um, of three machines um, built. And what we're going to do is um, I have a little client written in Ruby using the Ruby client library for Gossiper. Um, I will start it, and I will send a message from the first node to the third node. The client will be running on the third node. The clients can only talk to the overlay on the local host. So um, they cannot receive events directly from another member. It always has to go through the overlay. So I'm going to start the client. It's running. And it also subscribed to an event um, digest forwardable test. So now with another curl command, we will send a digest It's a bit unfortunate with those windows. Um, so that's our command. Um, it's going to send um, a digest forwardable test with some data, which is a JSON data. It will be all serialized to Thrift. Um, and uh, it will send it to uh, through the 100 member to the overlay. And what we should see is we should see that the message arrives on member 3. And it didn't. Um, <laughs> can I make the font bigger? That's a good question. I never practiced that. OK, good. Thank you. Is it good? <laughs> the reason why it didn't work is um, OK, the reason why it didn't work is because what happens is when we create an overlay, um, we get a response from um, from the the, the, the gossiper daemon, and that response is a token. We need to use this token as authentication for what we want to send. In this case, the token is different, obviously. Uh, yeah. Let's do it quickly. Yeah. Token. Okay. It's a wrong member. Uh, okay, let's try it through this. Yes. So uh, I've sent it through 101 and not 100, but uh, we see that the message arrived. So what is interesting to notice um, is that the message has been sent uh, from 101 to 102. Where's my cursor? Hello? There you are. Um, and the member 101 received the confirmation that the message was delivered to 102. And then um, if we was to check the log of 102, we will see that the message has been delivered to the Ruby demo client. But the message never appeared on 100. So it's clever enough to figure out that um, the subscriptions exist only on certain members, and it will only deliver those messages to those members that, uh, that we want to deliver to. Um, so that was the first little demo. Um, so. Um, that's basically what Gossip Girl does. Um, 
the, the core of it. So um, the clients, the client libraries, we have Erlang, uh, Java, Scala, Ruby, JavaScript. Uh, there is a Chrome support. Um, because in Chrome you can run extensions written in JavaScript and they have access to UDP ports. Um, there's C Sharp, um, should work with F Sharp, um, and there's more of them to come. So I only have seven minutes, so I'll try to really do it um, quicker now. Um, so the use cases. Uh, I mentioned that um, there is a product called Console. Um, so the reason why I started working on this um, and haven't used console was because the, the first version that um, I talked about, um, we actually finished it about two months before console came out. Um, and uh, just wanted to carry on on the experience that I had and just build my own stuff. So I built my own stuff. Um, so the service discovery is a perfect example for, um, for a gossip system where uh, the applications can just post whatever data they need to share with others um, and uh, they can be consumed by the, by the cluster. Um, and distributed state, um, for example, um, not only sharing the membership of the overlay itself, but sharing members of um, something that connects to your system um, can be done with that as well. For example, if you have a system that needs to deliver some messages over distributed uh, messaging bus, um, where you have, say, three brokers, and you have member A connecting um, to broker A, and you have member B connecting to broker C, um, when the message from A arrives to B, um, you don't want to send it to every um, broker. You just want to make sure that um, it goes directly from broker A to broker C. Um, so that would be um, an example for that, where the, what is connected on which broker is stored um, in another gossip state, which is then um, shared um, across the nodes, so, they kn so you know where um, a subscription is. Um, and I said that there is um, um, a multicast uh, support. So I've got those little um, uh, Raspberry Pis running here. There's three of them. Um, so um, it won't be a, a subscription demo. It will be just uh, a simple joining demo. <coughs> but I need to find my um, terminal. Not this one. So it's going to be this one. OK, so um, again. Um, Three Raspberry Pis. Um, there is multicast uh, enabled on, on them. Um, so I will start. It goes with sudo here. Um, sudo opt gossip I'll bin gossip I'll start. It's going to take a little bit longer to launch, um, just because it's a um, slower machine. And uh, yeah, we just basically tail left on the log. Um, and obviously, I've been trying that before, so um, so there there are already some entries. Um, the errors that are visible there. Um, Every member, when he leaves, is handled by a separate process in Erlang. So the thing is written completely in Erlang. Um, so when the member leaves, the process will crash, and we will catch that. So that's why we see the error in the log, but it's not really an error as such. Um, and again, with a little curl command, which I have somewhere here. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's the one. Um, we will bring up the terminal. Um, I think I remember the IP addresses of this. So it's 0, 2, 3, and 4. So we started one here. Go 
super console. It's running there. Um, hello. In the command, we can see that, um, well, there is a seed, um, but the seed is completely somewhere else. Um, and uh, we use um, multicast settings uh, with the multicast um, address there. Um, so they talk over multicast. So let's bring up three. It should come up. Hello? It's, um, yeah, wrong window underneath. Um, so there we are. And we have the third one, which is um, tail f var log Pro console, um, which is running, but not a member yet. So we will make him a member. And uh, there we go. So we have three Raspberry Pis talking over multicast um, with gossip. Um, so that's what it is. Um, The code is available on GitHub. It's fully open source. Um, this is all available under MIT license. Um, clients and the, um, the daemon itself. Um, and if anybody has any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Questions, then? Uh, is there any documentation included with the GitHub repository? Yes, there is a, there is a wiki. Um, the documentation may not be the best quality, um, but there is documentation. So there is the description of um, all the rest um, commands and how to configure it. Um, it's under a, um, a gossiper organization on GitHub. So there's a number of different projects. Um, there are projects for setting this up, for building this, um, creating the release. Um, all, all, it's all there. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, at one of the slides in the, in the beginning, I saw gossip for M2M applications. Mm -hmm. But most of, the, of your examples were in service discovery, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, React and uh, Cassandra, Dynamite. So do you think it's ap applicable in, f it's possible to do gossip for M2M devices or use it uh, in real-time messaging, ephem ephemeral real-time messaging like FireChat to deliver messages? There are applications um, for which... Uh, the, 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 there are applications for gossip where you could, where you could use it directly for machines. Um, there is a little project that um, I started working on, which uh, if you want, I can discuss um, when outside of that. Anything else? We have one last question then. So my intuition from what you shared with us is that uh, what you gain from using this instead of incorporating in the logic of your application all the, well, all the logic related to finding which nodes are alive and when they come back and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, is that you save that effort from every time you have to implement that logic. Have you, can you share any, even if it's an intuition of how shorter your code base gets when you use something like this that is already there as a daemon or? Um, I can only refer to the example from the real world where we have applied that um, at a big scale. Um, when we launch the platform at Veerdata, um, we don't really look at um, whenever the instances came up. We just launch them and they will become available. So we cut out a lot of code that would generally check if the instance is up. That's one of the applications. How much code has it saved us? Difficult to say, because we never written that code. Okay. <laughs> and you can compare and, uh, it. <laughs> and and the, 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 the original library w is about 300 lines of Ruby code. So that's the, that's the very nice trick with gossip, is that not many people really know that it's there, but in principle, it is a very, very simple protocol, which is not very complex to write and to handle. That's the, the outcome of, of this talk. Okay. 
Thank you. Well, then, let's thank, thank you. Brad.